Good morning, everyone. It's Monday morning. It's time for morning prayer and devotion. I thank you for joining me this morning. You're probably wondering why I'm wearing this particular shirt today for morning prayer, and it will figure into our uh, devotion here shortly. So don't give up hope on me right away this morning. I do welcome each one of you who are joining us today, thanking God for you and your part in this prayer ministry. We do have some praise reports to share with everyone this morning. Uh, first of all, Sherman's wife's son did well with his treatment for COVID pneumonia and has been released from the hospital. So we're glad to be able to report that good news this morning. Also, Sally Waller's daughter, Amy, <clears throat> has been released from the hospital. So we're thanking the Lord for that as she was at times very close to death, actually. And uh, we're thankful to see that turnaround for her. Pastor Lowe, this is Carol Dixon's pastor, thanks us for all the prayers. He says his back is better than it has been in a very long time. So we praise the Lord for his um, victory this morning. In our prayer request today, Terry Mizell has been in the hospital with an infection and has had two surgeries as a result of this, one for a blockage in his leg and another uh, surgery on his foot. Recovery time is expected to be very lengthy, so let's remember Terry and his family in our prayers. Judy Bryant, this is uh, Cammy Murphy's mother, is having total shoulder replacement today and needs our prayers for that. Uh, Jenny Perkins' dad ended up not being able to have the procedure for his kidney um, or for his kidney stones on Friday. Uh, this was due to a large stone that is lodged in the channel between the kidney and bladder. And so they've decided that other than instead of doing the uh, procedure in office, it's going to have to be done in the hospital. And uh, at last word, they did not know yet when that was going to be scheduled for. So let's continue to remember that uh, situation and remember Jenny, who will be traveling home this week sometime. Uh, Sister Shirley Perkins is supposed to have four to six stents placed in her heart sometime this week. The family is awaiting word from the doctor as to when that's going to happen. Shirley's husband, Bob, needs prayers for strength, so let's continue to remember both of them. We need to pray for continued recovery for those who have had recent surgery, Sister Margaret Stepp, Carmen's Uncle Bob, Melanie Whitman, Aubrey Vickery, Rue, Bob O, Brenda Storm's sister, Cindy, Carson Dowdy, Steve Cummins, uh, who was able to be back in service with us for the first time yesterday. We're thankful for that. Uh, Judy Williams' sister, Paula, Bonnie Pulaski's daughter, Patty, all needing prayer for continued recovery. Erica Ruff, who was a uh, first-time guest in our service yesterday, uh, has requested prayer for her grandmother, Shirley Ruminer, who is in bad health, and she also wants us to pray for her Aunt Sheila, who lost a son in a car accident a couple of years ago and is really struggling with this. Melena Cummins is down in her back and needs our prayers today. Others with back issues include James Graham, Britt Moore, Terry Adams, Michael Parrott, Pam Pulliam's daughter Jenny, Tammy Lawson, and as we mentioned in our praise reports, Carol Dixon's pastor, doing much, much better. Let's continue believing for complete healing for all of these. Uh, Sister Rebecca Rush has an unspoken need of uh, some things going on uh, in their family that she really needs the Lord to intervene in. We need to continue to remember the Jadranechik family. I hope I said that somewhat close to being right. Um, but they're needing prayers for uh, strength and comfort as their family member, uh, Reverend Robert Jadranechik, passed away last Thursday after suffering a stroke. Uh, Carol, Jamie and Dave, and Mick need prayers for continued recovery from COVID-19. Also, I would mention Sister Jody Smith, diagnosed with a rare um, a rare uh, problem with her heart that is due to COVID. Uh, after her battle with COVID, everything seemed to be going pretty well, uh, but now she has this issue and it affects very few people, but it has been linked to uh, COVID and something that's an after effect of it. So let's continue remembering her. Others who have lung and respiratory problems, Robbie Northrup and Kendra Ortiz with COPD. Bonnie Pulaski has difficulty breathing is requiring oxygen all the time 
Cheryl Lachance has respiratory issues. Uh, Jenny, um, excuse me, Scott Sealer has been dealing with kidney stones and needs our prayers. Uh, stomach issues are still a, a problem for Olivia, Terry Adams, Aubrey, and Pastor Mark Godby's daughter. We're believing for healing and restoration after stroke for Brother Huey, who thankfully was moved to a rehab unit over the weekend. And we're believing for his continued recovery. Also for Kelly and Shannon, Tina's mother, and for Sheila Sappington. Gerald Hudson, Leslie Pride, and Lana Taylor are dealing with dementia. Brother Marty DeLotte and Brother Riley March both suffer with illness. Both of Regina Marlin's granddaughters have been battling with sinus infections. Um, Laura Lay, Jenna, and Tucker are battling cancer. Baby Elsie and Baby Brantley Joe have heart issues. Abel Ray suffers with PKU syndrome. Tano Lopez has spina bifida. Abram Page has GNAL1 disorder. And Christian Carr and Titus Dornbach uh, both suffer with juvenile diabetes. I might mention here that we requested prayer next day who had strep throat last week and he has recovered from that. So we're thanking the Lord for that this morning. Uh, Adults who are battling diabetes, Tim Workman, Emily Stanley, Cheryl LaChance, Brother Pulliam, J.R. Johnson, Terry Adams' friend Marcia, and myself. Those with heart issues include Pastor Steve Sullivan's father, Cheryl LaChance, Kenny Prenzel, and Brenda's friend Melvin, who had, Brenda's friend Melvin had a heart attack recently due to kidney failure. He's on dialysis needing open heart surgery. Renee needs healing of her hips and knees. Rebecca Williams needs healing of pain in her legs. Jean Brightwell suffers with arthritis and disc inflammation. Beth Wheatley, Mara Sullivan, and James Graham need healing of migraine headaches. My mother-in-law, Beulah Ziegler, my dad, Ron Bryant, as well as Russ and Tim Workman need healing of Parkinson's. Jim Connor, is having kidney issues, actually needing a kidney transplant. Aubrey and Loren need healing of their kidneys, and Brother Virgil Pulliam's brother needs healing of his kidneys, and also cirrhosis of the liver and pancreatitis. Jamie Jo Shepard needs healing of her liver. We have several who are continuing to battle cancer, so let's continue to remember them. Edie Percival with stage 4 ovarian cancer, Del Bishop, Lydia, Philip Randall, David Harris, Michael Bolin, Linda Fox, Alicia Piero, Diane Escher, Claire, Marsha Moore's friend's grandparents, John Fitzgerald, Aaron Payne, Kathy Burks, Dwayne Lewis, Nathan Van Ingman, Lisa Workman, Jenny Coffey, James Graham's aunt, Kathy Bloss, Christy Smith, a friend of Terry Adams, Dennis Phelps, Sylvia Larimore, and Ari Bowers, all needing our continued prayers, and we're believing for miracles for them today. Those on hospice care include Donna Dalton, J.B. Goforth, and uh, my grandfather, Ellis Marshall. Uh, thankfully, we were able to spend some time uh, with him yesterday in his home, and um, he has a very good attitude, and he's uh, ready to meet the Lord. He's just waiting on that chariot uh, to arrive. So we thank the Lord for all that he's doing, and even in difficult situations, we know that God is there with us all. Amen. Let's pray for the spiritual needs today for uh, Amy, Josh, Jamie, Dan, Dalton, Charles, and Dylan who need deliverance from drug addiction. Uh, Pam Pulliam's children uh, need the Lord today. Regina Marlin's family, Terry Adams' children, Haley, Evie, Rose, Carl, and Connor needing continued prayer for salvation. Let's continue praying for our Mingo Residential Care residents. I have a Bible study uh, set up there. And we're believing God for great things through that. Jennifer and Brenda's family, Judy and Mike's family, Mark and Caitlin, Beulah's family, Caroline Sexton's family, Cheryl's family member, Art Chandler, Marsha Moore's children and granddaughter, Josiah, Sheila Outlaw, who desires a closer walk with the Lord, Charles and Amber Gossett, Barbara Owens, and our Mingo Job Corps current students and alumni. In our family needs today, let's continue to remember the situation with Baby G's adoption. Uh, we're leaving out the details, of course, uh, due to the situation. This is a complicated situation. The child has been with a foster family since birth and parents deemed unfit. But now that the adoption process has almost been completed, 
the birth member or birth mother um, has got an attorney is now trying to stall or prevent the adoption. The child does not know the birth parents and has special needs with severe allergies. And so this could be a very dangerous situation for this baby at this point. Annette and Dave were praying for healing in their marriage. Alicia, the Stewart family, James and Anza Graman family, Debbie Biddick's family, and Grace's best friend's family all have needs within their families as well. We want to continue praying for a couple of our North American missionaries, Brother Jerry West, who is planning a church in uh, Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, and has encountered some opposition in um, trying to get a permanent uh, place for worship. And so let's believe with them today that those doors will be opened. And for Sister Sheila Bowens, who ministers to the community of Owensville, Missouri, having great revival, baptized uh, more people over this weekend, and uh, doing a great work there. Let's continue to pray for uh, for her and for her church. I welcome each of you this morning, thanking God for you and your participation in our morning prayer group. I welcome mom and dad here with us this morning, uh, Sherman. Um, and he actually is now saying that Javi is still in the hospital, still having problems breathing. And so I reported that, I guess, incorrectly. Um, Brother Mike had told me yesterday that he was thinking he had gotten to go home. So let's continue to pray for that situation. Also, a Christian reports that Dave is doing better and is back to church. Thank the Lord for that. We welcome you this morning, Kristen and uh, Sherman and Carmen. God bless each one of you. And uh, Sherman is uh, giving me a thumbs up on the shirt this morning. You may be the only one, Sherman, but maybe the other ones will jump on board with us here as we do the devotion and they get a little explanation here. And maybe not. We'll see. Marcia, good to have you with us this morning. Uh, Sister Pam, God bless you. What a wonderful group we have today joining us for morning prayer and devotion. I want to read to you from Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32, beginning in verse 24. And it says that Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall no more be called Jacob. But Israel, for as a prince, hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Amen. Well, wow, what a wonderful passage of scripture that leads us right into my topic this morning, which is WrestleMania. Now, uh, this is something that some of you might not know about me. You would never guess that I'd be a person who has attended uh, four WrestleManias, uh, but with a teenage son and... Um, and with my backstory as a child who had a neighbor, an elderly gentleman that introduced me to professional wrestling when I was a, a, a very young lad. And I became a fan, first of all, of wrestling at that time, at the time when I thought it was all legit. And then as I learned uh, about it um, in detail, um, I remained a fan and became a fan more so of the business, as they would say, the business of professional wrestling, the art form, the entertainment aspect of it, and what goes into it behind the scenes. And so then my son came along many years later after I had kind of gotten away from it, and he, he found professional wrestling on his own, and he liked it. And so it's something we began to do together at different times, going to wrestling matches and this kind of thing. So uh, we ended up going to uh, several WrestleManias. And um, um, so that's kind of the story of that. But let me, for those of you that aren't familiar with, with professional wrestling, and in your mind it's just the only word you associate it with is uh, fake, uh, you have to understand a little bit more about professional wrestling and the story that goes with it. And um, the main thing I would tell you is there's some terms that you need to understand. One is 
heels. Maybe perhaps this came from the story of Jacob and his wrestling match because we know that Jacob was a heel grabber. He was a conniver. He was a deceiver. And there would be nobody cheering for him to win a match. And those are the heels. They're the bad guys. They're playing the part of someone that none of us wants to uh, support. And then there are the baby faces. They're the good guys. And they're the ones that everybody's wanting to cheer on and, and to see them to be successful. And then another term that you need to be familiar with in this story is the term shoot. The term shoot is when, if we say that it was a shoot, that means that somewhere in the middle of this fixed competition where the outcome was predetermined, somebody went into business for themselves and it suddenly got real. They got angry, whatever, and, and they began to really fight and made the outcome uncertain. And so we see this in the story of Jacob's life. You know, God wants us to succeed. And if we are a heel, he would like to turn us into a baby face. He would like for us to become something different than what we are. And so uh, Jacob in his life was always conniving, always in fixed circumstances where somehow he came out on top even though uh, that he shouldn't have. That's because it was scripted by God and God's hand was upon him even in these situations where he was not doing the will of God. But one day he found himself in a real wrestling match. He found himself in a shoot situation where this angel that was wrestling with him um, touched the hollow of his thigh and it was suddenly out of joint. And Jacob realized, you know what, I may not win this one. But in his determination, he found out that God still wanted to uh, quote unquote, put him over. All these things are wrestling terms that many of you may not understand, but you can look up a little glossary and maybe you'll get a little bit more out of it. But I want you to understand today that regardless of what our past circumstances are, God wants us to succeed, but we're going to have to submit to his will for our lives. We have to submit to the storyline that he has planned for us. And if we will do that, God will make sure that the end result, no matter what bruises and and bumps and damage maybe that we may take along the way, he will make sure that we're going to win in the end. And for Jacob, this was the case that uh, as he conversed with that angel in the midst of their wrestling match, um, in the end, his name was changed and he was now a baby face. He was a child of God. He was a person that became a great leader uh, for the people of Israel. And uh, in fact, the, the father... Uh, of, or actually his name changed to Israel, and from him the 12 uh, tribes would come forth. So I wanted to share that with you this morning, probably the one and the only time you'll see me in my WrestleMania shirt on morning prayer and devotion, and it looks like I took a little extra time there uh, because I had to explain a few things to those who may not be familiar. If you're a wrestling fan, you can either keep that a secret today or you can um, uh, post a like or love or whatever, and if you're a fan of this fixed competition that we are in, which is called living for God. Understand that God has left nothing to guess. The outcome, what goes on in the match of life may be uncertain, but the end result is scripted. And I've read the back of the book and we are going to win. So let's believe today as we pray today that God is on our side and he's working for us. And let's believe today that he's going to move in every need. Lord Jesus, we thank you today for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that you've gone out of your way to make sure that we are going to be the winners in the end. I pray you would strengthen each person's faith this morning, Lord, that you would encourage them today as we pray, as we start out this brand new week, whatever's coming against each person's life today. I pray, Lord, that you would either take it out of the way or that you would take them through it, and we give you praise for all that you're doing Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We're believing God for healing today for Terry Mizell. Lord, we pray against that infection in his body. We pray that his recovery would be quicker than expected. We pray for Judy Bryant today, God, as she's having total shoulder replacement. We're believing for everything to go well for her. We pray for Jenny's dad today, Lord, that they'll be able, he'll be able to have this procedure that he needs, that everything will be straightened out for him we pray, God, for his wife and for Jenny today, that you would strengthen them during this time. We pray for Sister Shirley Perkins, Lord. 
We're believing God for everything to go well with her, uh, her stints that are being placed this week. And for her husband, Bob, Lord, give him strength today. We pray, God, for those who have had recent surgery for continued recovery. Lord, just keep your hand upon them. Lord, that they would be made completely whole. We know, God, that you made our bodies to where that they would begin to heal. And we thank you for that miracle. Hallelujah. Let those wounds begin to close over today. Hallelujah. Let every incision heal properly without infection. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, for uh, Sister Melena Cummins today for healing in her back. We pray for these others with back issues today that they would receive their healing. We pray, Lord, this morning for Erica Ruff's family, for her grandmother Shirley, for her Aunt Sheila. Lord, you see their needs today, and you see Erica's needs. God, help us to reach her. Help us to reach her with truth, oh God. In Jesus' name, we believe, Lord, for Rebecca Rush today, for their family. You see the unspoken need and what's going on there. We believe for your work. We pray, Lord, for the Jadranetic family today, God, that you would comfort their hearts and strengthen them, Lord, during this time in their lives. Lord, we pray that you would help them and comfort them in this loss. We pray, God, for those who are still battling with COVID. Lord, we thank you, God, for the progress that has been made. We thank you, Lord, that this last wave has pretty much passed over here in our local area. We thank you for that, and we believe you for healing for those who are still struggling in Jesus' name. We pray for Sherman's wife's son today, God, that he would be able to get out of the hospital, that his breathing, Lord, would be completely healed. Others who are dealing with other lung issues and respiratory issues today, those names we have called out today in this prayer gathering, we're believing God for them to be made completely whole. We pray for Scott Sealer today for healing of, of his kidney stones. We believe God for those with stomach issues today to receive a healing touch. Those who have had stroke recently, we believe for each of them today to recover fully. For Brother Huey, for Kelly and Shannon, for Tina's mother, for Sheila Sappington, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for Gerald Hudson, for Lana Taylor, for Leslie Pride today, Lord, that their minds would clear. Lord, that there would be strength for their family members during this uh, time that they're battling with dementia. We pray for Brother Riley March and Brother Marty DeLott, Lord, that they would receive healing today of MS. We pray for Regina's granddaughters, Lord, that they would receive healing of these sinus infections. We pray for each child that's struggling against rare disorders and cancers and heart issues today and juvenile diabetes. Lord, you are the healer of all manner of sickness and disease. And you said in your word, Lord, to permit the children to come to you. Oh God, take them in your arms today and minister to them, we pray. Hallelujah. We pray for those who are battling diabetes today. Touch Emily and Tim and Cheryl and Brother Pulliam. Lord, J.R. Johnson needs your touch today. Terry's friend, Marcia, needs healing. We believe for that today. We pray for Pastor Steve Sullivan's father for healing of his heart. For Cheryl and for Kenny, Lord, with their heart issues today. For Melvin needing healing of this uh, heart situation and this kidney situation today. We pray for Renee and for Rebecca and for Jean today for healing of the pain in their body, their hips and knees and, and arthritis, Lord. Whatever the situations are, we believe for your healing for them. We pray today, God, for Sister Beth and for Mara and for James, Lord, for healing of migraines. We pray for those battling with Parkinson's today. Lord, touch my father today. Minister healing for him, for Beulah Ziegler, Lord, for Russ and for Tim Workman. We pray for those that are dealing with kidney issues, for Jim Connor, who's needing a kidney transplant. We pray for Aubrey and Loren and for Brother Pulliam's brother, Lord, all needing healing of their kidneys. In Jesus' name, we pray against cirrhosis of the liver and pancreatitis right now. Lord, you're able to heal all of these things. You're supplying each and every need today according to your riches and glory. And we give you the praise for it this morning. Touch Jamie Joe today. Lord, she needs healing in her body, healing of her liver right now. Hallelujah. We pray, God, for all those who are battling cancer. Touch Edie Percival today. You see her struggle, Lord. Each and every one of these that we've called out today on this prayer list, we know that you are well able. We know that you care about what they're going through. When it seems, Lord, that, that you're not there, we know that that's not true. We know that you're still working on the left hand. 
You're still working behind the scenes, Lord, to bring victory for us, and we believe for each of them today. We pray for those who are on hospice care today, for my grandpa, Lord, and for the family today, for your strength for them. We pray for JB and for Donna today, God. Move, Lord, for them and their families today. Lord, these others who have health needs this morning, Chloe and Kevin, Morgan and Meredith, Jimmy and Bobby, Nicole and Regina, Shirley and Mary, God, touch each one of them. Move in every spiritual need today. You see those who need deliverance from addiction. We pray for Amy and Josh, for Jamie and Dan and Dalton and Charles and Dylan. Lord, you're going to deliver them if they'll just simply turn their hearts toward you. Lord, and desire that deliverance uh, with everything in their being, God, if they will truly turn their hearts over to you, we know that you desire to make them whole. We pray, Lord, for each of these uh, concerned saints today, these who have backslidden children, these who have family members, Lord, who are lost today without you. We believe, God, that each one of them that we've called out in this prayer meeting this morning, that they're going to come to you. They're going to turn their hearts toward you. We believe for it today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We believe for healing in our families, Lord. We believe, God, today for baby G's adoption, Lord, to go through, for everything to go according to your perfect will. It doesn't matter how complicated the situation is, Lord. You are in control. We pray for Annette and Dave and for Alicia. We believe for the Stewart family today and for James and Angela and their family, for Debbie's family, for Grace's best friend's family. Move, Lord, on their behalf today. We pray for Sister Sheila Bowens and for Brother Jerry West, Lord, as they're planning churches today. We pray, God, that your favor would just be upon them, Lord, as we know that it is. But, God, give them favor also with men today, with people in their community, with key people, Lord. God, that will be able to help them to reach the lost in their cities. We pray against the opposition of the enemy. Lord, you are in charge today. And we thank you, God, that you're bringing the victory. Help us to believe and to realize that our faith is the actual substance of what we are hoping for. We're going to hold on to that substance. We're going to hold on to that faith until we see the victory. We give you the praise and the glory for all of these things today. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. God bless you this morning. Thank you for praying with me. And I look forward to a, a great week of prayer and worship and the word with you. Uh, share these videos with someone else that might need uh, the devotion from today um, and let them know that we're praying for them, believing for their situation. I'll see you back here tomorrow morning, Lord willing, at 7.30 a.m. right here on Facebook.